Hello, it's Julius from Basic Financials. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, property ownership in the forms of uh, joint tenants or tenants in common and what's the difference between that and why you might want to do one or the other. Um, now we're normally talking about um, say buying a house or you've already got a house and more than one owner. Now a joint tenants you own the property um, 100% both of you effectively own the property 100%. Um, whereas with tenants in common, you own a, a share of the property. Now that share will be whatever you state it to be. Um, it might be 50-50% each, um, or it might be, you might have three owners, um, and it could be one, one person owns 50% and the other people own 25%. Um, you don't sort of s split out the property and say, well, I own this bit, you own that bit. You're owning, owning effectively that percentage of the whole, but it is a separate and distinct ownership. Whereas with the joint tenants, um, you you actually own the whole property, um, both of you. Now, the difference. One of the main differences, um, if one of you dies and you're a joint tenant then it doesn't matter what you've said in your will about what you want to happen to your assets and liabilities, um, the joint joint tenant, the survivor, will automatically um, inherit the uh, the remaining the remaining prop the well the property. So basically they will any any other owners will automatically become the owners in full of of the um of the so the person who died, their share will go to the remaining owners. Whereas, if you have property owned joint um, tenants in common, and if one of you dies, then that person's share will go to whoever they've said it will go to in their will, or by the laws of intestacy. Um, so the joint, the other owners won't receive that property. Now you could probably start to see why why you might want to have one or the other from that description. Um, for example, a husband and wife or a partner, two partners, might want to own a property jointly, especially if they've got a joint mortgage, uh, which they're likely to have. Um, then if one of you dies, then the mortgage is still payable by the other person. Uh, and, the, and therefore they probably will want to be having the whole whole property so that if they decide to sell they can then repay the mortgage if, if you know, let's say so let's say they haven't owned the property for years and there's still a sizable mortgage left um, now another side of things is it's some people say you say you're might be getting on a bit older you haven't got a mortgage anymore that although that's irrelevant really um, and you own the property jointly um, one of you, if one of you dies, then automatically, if you own your property jointly, the uh, the share of the property will go to the other person. Now, if you're thinking about care homes and fees payable payable to care homes, and what care homes will often do is, if you haven't got enough money to pay, then they will um, take the proceeds of your house when when you die. Well. If you own own the property jointly, then if the other when you die, if that person dies, then and the, the other person gets the uh, gets the property in whole, and the the care home, and, that, and then that person needs to go into a care home, then the care home will have the whole property to look at for 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 funds. Whereas, if in your will you decided. Right. Okay. Well, let's change this from joint tenants to tenants in common, and one part, one spouse or partner decides. Well, okay, we're going to leave. I'm going to leave my share if I die to my children. Um, then, when that person, if the, one of the people dies, there that person's share will go to the children, and then the person left will only have half the share of the property, and therefore the the care home would only have access to that half not the whole home. So that's one reason why you might want to change or or have them in joint. Um, 
Now, what other reasons are there? Tax purposes are not so common now because um, the rules have changed with inheritance tax, but um, quite often it, it's quite useful, was quite useful to be able to say what you wanted to happen to to a share of property, not to automatically go to the other person, um, so that you could plan plan for tax purposes. That was another reason why you might have tenants in common rather than joint ownerships. Um, if you're buying property with a friend, and um, so so you're not married, you're not partnership. Maybe, maybe you haven't got the same sort of. You might trust each other as friends, but you might not have the same level as if you were partners or spouses. Um, then you might might consider owning the property as tenants in common, so that you're protecting your your share of the property. Um, so that if you were to die. Um, then it wouldn't automatically go to the other owners, which you wouldn't want probably. You'd want it to go to your family. Um, so that's another reason. Um, I think that's probably enough to be thinking about. There's quite a lot online um, about tenants in common and joint tenants. So if you, if you need to look in more detail, there's plenty of information out there. But that gives you a, a little brief understanding of it and why you might want to be researching it a bit more. Certainly for buying a house with more than one person, they will be asking you whether you want to um, be buying it in joint, joint, as joint owners or tenants in common. Um, yeah, okay, well, if you've got any questions or comments, please um, put them in the space below. And if you like and subscribe as usual, please. And I'll see you again for another video soon. Thanks for listening.